All right, what's up data geeks? Today, I wanna to talk about the Tesla Model 3 versus the Chevy Bolt. And this is a great comparison because it's one that reaches a ton of people. Previously, Teslas were really just more of a luxury item. If you were looking at a 50 or $60,000 car, you'd consider it. Or if you wanted the high-end EV, if you were just committed to an electric vehicle. But now with the Model 3, we're seeing them in the $35,000 range, which is much more accessible. And especially if you add in the $10,000 tax credit or the 7,500 federal, 2,500 here in California, it comes down to a regular price car for that matter. But GM is getting into the mix too. And if you recall, they used to make electric cars. In fact, they made an awesome car called the EV1. There's a great movie you should go check out called uh, Who Killed the Electric Car? It's fantastic, a uh, horrible story, but you know, this is a great time in history because electric vehicles are coming to the masses. They're affordable, they don't have this minimal range, and there's something that is gonna really, hopefully, change how transportation happens. So first, range anxiety. Now, all the electric cars on the market now, with the exception of these two new ones, had a limited range of about 80 miles, and that sucks. I mean, that's barely enough to get to work and back for some people. And in fact, when it says 80 miles, they don't get that full charge. Usually you'll get a few miles less than that because what happens is it wants to actually keep you a little under so it doesn't kill the battery and also so you don't get stuck on the road. So now the Chevy Bolt is coming out with 238 miles of range. That's awesome. And the Tesla Model 3 has a slightly less than that. The base model is 215. And they haven't given details yet, but some estimates out there you can find say anywhere between 215 to 250. Some people are even thinking that they'll have a, a big fat battery and that will be up to you know 280 miles or something like that. So it really varies on the Tesla, but really it's pretty negligible. You know, 215 miles here and there isn't gonna be a big difference when you're you're talking about a couple hundred miles. So the next thing to think about is charging and what to do about that. So Tesla has the supercharger network, which all the current owners will have for free forever, which is awesome. But all the new ones are gonna have to pay for some amount of use of the supercharger network. There aren't a ton of details out there yet, but you can guarantee that the Model 3 won't be free unlimited for the supercharger network. So that said, there are stops. You can drive from San Diego to Boston if you'd like, uh, but it's not gonna be totally free. Now, Tesla also, you can install it in your house, uh, which I've done. It takes a 240 amp typically, depending on how you want to do it, um, which costs a fair amount of money. It's not really that cheap to get a charger set up in your house. Now, Chevy uses the ChargePoint network, and they have about 31,000 total charging spots across the U.S., but there's only 405 express uh, chargers, which sucks. Those are probably the ones that you're gonna wanna use more often than not, because they're faster and they give you a, a recharge quicker. So the Chevy one is good that they're partnering with somebody that already has this and it's gonna make it accessible for a lot of folks. Uh, imagine if you're going to the movies or the mall or grocery store or to work even, you probably have a charger somewhere that you can use. But again, it's not free. So really it's pretty negligible in this case. Let's say that it's a wash. Both of them have good charging networks, but neither of them are free, unlike the current Model S or Model X owners that already have them and do have access to the Tesla network for free. So the next thing is speed. Now this, I think, almost almost is a safety feature, really. And also, I love going fast. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's just in my blood as an American male that I wanna go fast in my car. And thankfully, both of these cars are gonna deliver on this. The Chevy goes zero to 60 in 6.5 seconds. That's not tremendously fast. That's not the P100D beating a Lamborghini in a race. But, it is pretty damn fast. And the Model 3 is gonna go zero to 16 under six seconds. So the Model 3 definitely wins this race. But one other thing to mention is that Elon has said that the Model 3 will also have ludicrous mode. Now, would that get it under four seconds? We're talking 3.5 seconds, zero to 60? I don't know. Bottom line, both of these are gonna be pretty fast cars, have a tremendous amount of speed. Now, the Tesla, I think, is gonna win on this one because obviously they have a lot more experience building these EVs and some of their cars are the fastest in the world. In fact, I think the P100D uh, recently came out that it is the fastest car you can buy in the world. That isn't like a million dollar supercar, but like a Bugatti or something like that. So the next thing related to speed is torque. Now, torque is kind of confusing when you think about an EV because 
uh, the RPMs and those things, they don't all add up the same way. In fact, Tesla has a great blog post about, about this. And really, honestly, it's a bit too technical for me. I really don't care. But I will say this, the Chevy Bolt said it's gonna have 266 pounds of torque and the Model 3, we don't really know. However, check out this video of a Model S breaking the machine that measures torque. And just before it did that, it measured 700 pounds of torque. So 700 pounds of torque for a car is absolutely insane. And it comes down to how the kind of engine works where you don't really lose torque or the pickup as you go faster. It's almost instant. Literally, as soon as you hit the gas or the juice or whatever the hell we're calling it since there's no gas. But once you hit that, uh, the car just goes and it flies. I mean, you can almost measure it in G-forces instead of actual like towing capacity. But just to do a fair comparison, 700 pounds of torque is close to what you'd get on like a Chevy Silverado or a Dodge Ram or one of these big pickup trucks. Those obviously are gonna have more, but it's in that range, right? Those are maybe 750, 850, something like that. But this is a car and it's, it's an electric car. What the f that's nuts. So the Model 3, who knows? But really, all that matters is that you can actually gun it and this thing goes, and that is tremendous for safety as well. So we don't know a ton about the safety details of these vehicles yet, but as more details come out, I'll come back and update you on that. Now, the big thing and where Chevy is beating Tesla is availability. I can go to a dealership near me and actually buy one of these cars. Tesla, I cannot do that. And in fact, with the Model 3, unless you've already done this, unless you already made a reservation, you won't get it till mid 2018. So that's a couple year wait, which really sucks for some people. And if you're in the market right now, this is really kind of what I think is the, is the key factor to consider. Do you want the EV now or can you wait a little bit? If you can wait, the Tesla might be a better option. So let's continue on our list here. Safety, as we talked about, don't know a whole lot until they finish all the testing and all that. But there are some features related to safety that are gonna help here. One is the blind spot warning, which they both have, and they both have automatic braking. Now, the Model 3 has some other things related to safety, and I don't know if this is just awesome tech or safety related, I guess it's how you wanna chalk it up. The Model 3, however, really is gonna kick the crap out of the, the bolt with this though, because it has autopilot. It also ships with full self-driving hardware, which means fairly soon, maybe in a year or two, once Tesla starts to do this, you'll be able to do things like get out of your car, hit a button and it will go park itself. And then when you come out of a restaurant, you hit a button and it'll show back up. That's insane. I can't even tell you how many times we don't go out to eat because we're looking for parking or we're frustrated about having to find parking. Things like that are really just gonna kill it. So with autopilot though, one thing that is insane is the ability to detect an accident before it occurs. Check out this video of a Model S where the car actually starts to sound the alarm like uh, emergency braking before an accident occurs in front of it. Okay. Crazy, right? I can't imagine a future where we don't want all cars to be able to do that. Every car should have the ability to see, you know, a couple football fields ahead of it if there's an obstruction or something else, even in the dark, using the radar and all the other tech that comes on the cars and stopping and slowing down. Think about all the lives we're gonna save. So this is a huge safety benefit. And unfortunately, it's really only benefiting the Tesla models right now. So when it comes to the tech inside of the cars, uh, they're both gonna have some pretty cool stuff inside of the dash where the, it's a digital display. Teslas have had this forever, it's nothing new for them. Uh, the Bolt is gonna have a, a 10 inch screen uh, right there, which is actually pretty cool because what it'll do is it'll also do the Air, uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so it'll actually kind of mirror your screen and have an app. That's actually better than Tesla. I think the Tesla one has their own sort of operating system, but it kind of sucks in some ways. Like it has Slacker Radio, which is fine if I just want to listen to a couple songs, but it really sucks when it starts to play, become a radio and play random songs. I mean, it blows, but uh, it's free, so whatever, it's nice. 
So in addition to that, they're both gonna have an internet signal. The Chevy actually will let you pair your phone with that, so you're kind of getting your connection through them, which is pretty rad. I don't think the Tesla's gonna be able to do that. Certainly the current ones, or the ones I've driven in and mine, don't have that ability, even though they do have their own connection. I don't know, and maybe enlighten me, leave me a comment if I'm wrong. Uh, I don't think I can actually connect my device to it. That said, the Tesla will have a 17 inch screen. It kind of looks like an iMac inside of it. I'll show you a photo here. Uh, and it'll have a lot of stuff built in, like uh, like the radio feature, Google Maps, um, the rear view camera, all that kind of jazz. So I think the tech on the cars really comes down to the autopilot, self parking, all lane assist, all that kind of stuff. Uh, inside of the car, I think they're both doing pretty well. And certainly the Bolt is stepping it up from a lot of the other Chevys that you see out there. Let's talk about price for a second. And I honestly don't think that there's much difference here. All right. so. When it comes down to price, these cars are pretty even. The Model 3 starts at 35,000, and if you want to tack on autopilot, you're up to 38,000. The Bolt comes with 37.5. That's before you add on the cost of having the uh, fast charging capability, which I think is pretty lame. I think these cars should just be pretty juiced up as much as they can for this price. I mean, we want to make them attractive to people if we truly want to change the, the way transportation works uh, in the world. So I think they're fairly, competitive on price and if you're in the market for one you know I think there's a lot of different factors to consider now let's talk about looks for a second I have to be a little embarrassed here the Chevy looks like a mom van and I don't mean that in a really negative way I'm just saying if I'm buying it for myself I'm going with the Tesla it's a lot sexier and a lot sleeker and modern and everything the Chevy looks like about as good as Chevy can do, which still is pretty ugly, if you ask me. Uh, so sorry, Chevy. I'm, I'm afraid your car looks more like a minivan than an actual sport coupe or something I'd really want to want to ride around in. Uh, now, granted, I have kids. I you know under, I get it. It's a very practical car, but the Tesla also has great features, uh, with the exception of maybe the trunk. It's really small and really sucks. And Elon has said, in order to get enough headroom for the back, that's basically what they had to do was sacrifice that, but a bike should still fit in there. Now compare that to the trunk of the, Sh of the Chevy Bolt, and it's a lot bigger. You can fit a ton of stuff in there. So I think the Chevy Bolt wins out. Now, really the question is, which one would you choose? If you have 40 grand right now to spend on a car, and let's forget the tax incentives and all that stuff, are you gonna go for the practical one that you can go get today at a dealership? Or are you gonna wait a year or so, or maybe two more, unfortunately, uh, to get a car that's gonna be fully self-driving one day, or something that looks a lot sexier and is faster and has more torque and all that? I mean, I'd really love to know. Uh, what do you guys think? Which one would you get if you had to buy today? And granted, I know all the Tesla fanboys are gonna say the Model 3. I'm one of them, so I get it. But really, if you're undecided, I'd really love to hear what you think. So let me know in the comments below. Uh, please like this video if you enjoyed watching it. Subscribe to my channel. Uh, and give me any feedback you want, either down in the comments below or as a message. I really do appreciate all of you. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next time.